It looks like the troublemakers from AUT have arrived. Yes, but at least I got their speaker off. <laughs> See you, High Commissioner David Pine. How are you? I think uh, uh, AUT is already with a bandwagon of people behind him. At least the photo says so. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Uh, so we're on time. I think we should kick it off. Uh, people keep joining in. Uh, there are a lot of people watching on YouTube as well. So okay. Yeah, let us start it. Let's go for it. Namaskar, a very good afternoon and evening, depending upon where you are. On behalf of Team Tractor and Centurion University of Technology and Management, I would like to extend a hearty welcome to one and all attending the launch ceremony of this important initiative today. We are very grateful to the Honorable High Commissioner of New Zealand to India, His Excellency David Pan. I also want to extend a warm welcome to the Honorable President of Centurion University, Dr. Mukti Kanta Mishra, who is also one of the founders of the university. To Mr. John Laxon, Regional Director, Education New Zealand. To Brett Berquist, Director International at University of Auckland. To Professor Guy Little Fair at PVC International AUT University. To Mr. Isaac Prosnan, International Business Development Manager, Victoria University of Wellington. To Ms. Marine Watson, CEO at University Partnerships at Up Education. To Mr. Richard Kensington, Principal Academic Relation at Up Education New Zealand. To Mr. Chris Kelso, Group International Sales Director at Up Education New Zealand. To Ms. Tiffany Lee, Regional Sales Director East Asia and Rest of the World at Up Education. To Ms. Ritu Sharma, Regional Recruitment Manager at Up Education. To Mr. Ganesh Koramanal, CEO of iQuery, to Ms. Neli Ahmed, founder and trustee of Marius Public School Assam, and to all my colleagues who are behind this program. This event marks the launch of a very important and significant collaboration between Up Education New Zealand, iQuery, and Centurion University. Centurion's journey started more than 15 years ago and driven the vision of its two co-founders has now established itself firmly as a pioneer in the domain of skill-based higher education. Now I would request President Sir, Dr. Mukti Kanta Mishra to address us and also welcome His Excellency David Pine. Thank you, Suchita. Uh, good morning, uh, next week, good afternoon. I think we are mostly in India or New Zealand. And uh, so good afternoon and good evening. In fact, uh, my life, uh, there is a interesting, there is an interesting story about New Zealand. In 1995-96, I was lost uh, in my life. I didn't know what to do. So my journey started going to Auckland and started teaching in Auckland University for six months. And that is the time when we had the power outage in Auckland. So we used to get power for, uh, say, about an hour or two. I used to live in Auckland. So my memory lane takes me down to that uh, time when I enjoyed my uh, stay there and could find a path what to do. So the creation of Century University owes its origin of my solitude or my solitary confinement. Now, uh, you know, what we are getting nowadays with uh, international travel to Auckland, because I ran away from India. Nobody knew where I was. I didn't come to Australia because where I had the job, 
So I was uh, only teaching in Auckland University, and then uh, it was hiding in one place. So whatever Centurion today, of course, it has origin to um, um, New Zealand and Auckland University. So I think that Auckland University deserves uh, three claps from me for actually showing me the path to create this university. Now coming to this um, bracket and what we are trying to do. In fact, this is uh, we have many partnerships in Australia because that is my second home. But we never had any partnership with uh, New Zealand. And of course, I travel once in a while to New Zealand, but uh, never had the opportunity. So the first thing when I heard about that, you know, we will have a partnership with New Zealand universities. And of course, uh, all the universities mentioned here are world class, and there is no doubt about it. I visited most of the universities at some point in time before 2000. A lot of things must have changed. Uh, I think it is an honor, and uh, in fact, it's a privilege for me to be, uh, you know, delivering this opening remark for this partnership. And Australia, New Zealand, they always have maintained a fantastic relationship. I used to, I used to be a regular visitor to the embassy uh, once upon a time in early 2000. But of course, my um, focus changed to, I was, by the way, I was also the first one of the residents in Australia, in New Zealand uh, way back in 90s. Uh, but then my focus shifted to Australia, where I studied and uh, we have some consulting assignment with BHP. So I moved to Melbourne uh, and I spent more time in Australia and established many partnerships. But this is something which uh, I've been intending. It has been always in my heart and uh, head that we must establish um, uh, in a partnership with uh, New Zealand universities. And I know the New Zealand embassy is uh, something different in India. It gives a very welcoming feeling when you one walks into that uh, embassy. And I will, I do look forward to uh, meeting uh, His Excellency uh, when he is back to India, if he's not uh, in India. And when I'm back to India, uh, however, um, now, uh, you know, this is not the uh, time for uh, anything else other than talking about this partnership, which I think if we succeed with East and Northeast, uh, and which I definitely am quite confident that we'll succeed with uh, Sucheta and Beneath driving from our point, Ganesh working with that, and with all the support uh, from His Excellency David Pine and his team, uh, and wherever we need, and New Zealand Embassy is always, uh, is always very welcoming, and as, as such, New Zealand as a country is very welcoming and very uh, you know, kind of, uh, you, they make feel, feel you at home. So I'm sure that this program will, um, will, will, will succeed. And I, I'm, I'm quite uh, pleased and honored and privileged to uh, start this uh, program uh, or to, uh, you know, to, to deliver this uh, mem uh, commemoration address. And I re request now Suchita to present uh, uh, an appreciation, a plaque of appreciation to His Excellency. And then I request uh, His Excellency to speak a few words and this is uh, uh, from from our uh, side to his excellency david pine and i hope that one day sooner you will be making to odisha and you will be meeting all my team and you will see the uh, university yourself by the way just before i conclude this university focuses its uh, relationship with the indigenous uh, or what we call tribal communities and people who are uh, below poverty line people who do not have access to education and people who are economically and socially marginalized and live in the remote uh, and regional areas. So that, that remains the core. That's why we say shaping lives, empowering communities, uh, our uh, kind of, uh, you know, always the uh, core and that will remain the core. And uh, we had to create a niche for ourselves. That's why our education system is based on hands-on experience based and practice uh, oriented. And we have been declared as a center of excellence and we and as a skill university, we are one among the few who have uh, been pursuing skill um, converged or, you know, it's a blended, skill blended education in higher education sector for last 10 years. And it's, it can't be explained. One has to experience our model. It's very difficult to explain our model. And I'm, I'll be very grateful to all the, uh, all the team, uh, my friends from New Zealand and uh, their, their representatives in India at some point uh, with such a partnership, uh, which is uh, now uh, is, uh, you know, is being, is blossoming now, is no more uh, just uh, being talked. Uh, they should visit and try to have confidence that, uh, and support us uh, that, you know, we should drive this partnership to the fruition uh, in every count, uh, every possible manner. Thank you very much. This here is uh, our uh, gratitude. And uh, I request you to uh, grace the occasion and by accepting this, and uh, I hand it over to Sucheta to the next uh, program. Thank you, sir. 
His Excellency David Pine is New Zealand's High Commissioner to India, Bangladesh, and Ambassador Designate to Nepal. He was New Zealand's High Commissioner to Malaysia and Brunei Dar Salaam. Sir has a Bachelor degree of Honours in Political Studies and LLB from the University of Otago. He is a father of two teenage children and a very experienced and promising diplomat. So I would invite you to give your welcome address. Danyavat Sucheta Namaska, everybody. Um, well, thank you very much, um, uh, Professor Mishra, for those remarks. Um, I've, I've never received a plaque virtually before, so there's another first. Uh, we're all having plenty of firsts um, as we go along. Um, and I'm very glad to hear that you, um, that, that Auckland played an important part in um, putting you on the track you're on now. And, and equally pleased to hear that you find the High Commission and New Zealand more generally to be welcoming places. And you certainly can be assured that that welcome will continue. And I'm looking forward to meeting you and your team just as soon as we possibly can. It's a great pleasure to be uh, here in, in virtual land um, for, the, for the launching of this important program uh, that's going to provide an accelerated pathway into various courses and some of New Zealand's um, leading universities. In New Zealand, we know only too well that our most valuable resource for staying healthy, peaceful, prosperous, and free is the quality of our people. And India's entire civilization is a powerful testament to that same reality of keeping faith in investing in human resource development. The focus of our universities on real world skills to prepare students to succeed in the global workforce sits comfortably, I think, with India's national education policy uh, to fortify employment ratios. But more than that, education is an aspect of a relationship between our two countries that's broadening and deepening every year. And you can see the way our two countries are coming closer together um, in so many ways, in the demography of our country. Um, our two countries have well-established linkages through the Commonwealth and through sport. Our friendly rivalry on the cricket pitch goes back to 1955 and is still very much alive, as we saw uh, this year when Virat Kohli led his wonderfully talented team all around New Zealand. It is this year. It seems like a decade ago, but it was this year. Um, I'm under strict instructions in general from the Indian members of our High Commission team that I'm not allowed to mention the 2019 World Cup semi-final, so I won't. Um, but cricket isn't the only sport that we share a love for. Uh, both as teams and individuals, Kiwis and Indians, have competed against each other at the highest levels in badminton and hockey, as well as many other events in Commonwealth and Olympic Games. And a lot of that will be well known to people. But what might surprise you is that kabaddi is a rapidly growing sport in New Zealand. Uh, in fact, New Zealand made the final um, of the Women's World Cup in Punjab for three years in a row from 2013 to 2015. Um, India came out on top on all three occasions, so I hope that makes up for the cricket. But the, but the more important point is that the rise of kabaddi illustrates really important changes that are going on in New Zealand. In the last two decades, the proportion of our population who were born in India or claim Indian heritage um, has doubled to almost 5%. Um, Hindi is now our fourth most widely spoken language. Diwali will be widely celebrated or is being widely celebrated this week. And in fact, tomorrow afternoon, our team at the High Commission will be joining with colleagues from our Foreign Ministry's ethnic network to get the celebrations off to a good start. In short, Aotearoa is becoming an ever more welcoming environment for, for Indian students to come to. It's different enough to be interesting, but it's familiar enough so that students feel safe and not alienated. We're looking forward to welcoming the students of this country back to New Zealand just as soon as we're able to do so safely. So thank you again for, for taking the time to be with us um, at the launch of this important new program, Kaki Te Ano.
Thank you, His Excellency and President Sir, for your welcome remarks. And indeed, all the organizations have worked very closely and dedicatedly to reach at this stage. And it's a very happy moment for all of us. Now, without any further ado, we will share with you the details of the program through a brief presentation. I would now request Mr. Marine Watson, sorry, Ms. Marine Watson, CEO at our University Partnerships of Education, to start with the presentation. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, His Excellency, Mr. David Pine, Dr. Mukti Kanta Mishra, and university colleagues, Education New Zealand colleagues, Art Education colleagues, and iQuery colleagues. Thank you. As the CEO of the University Partnerships Division of UP Education, I am delighted to be celebrating this partnership with Centurion University. Centurion University is our first partner in India for the New Zealand Foundation Preparation Program. And I would like to thank Centurion University for this opportunity to help Indian students take the first steps to realizing their dream of an international education. My organization, UP Education, is a New Zealand-based organization which has been preparing international students for university entry uh, for over 20 years. We have a network of 34 campuses um, and we educate around 11,000 students annually. We are very proud of our partnerships with our New Zealand leading universities, the University of Auckland, Auckland University of Technology, and the Victoria University of Wellington. This foundation pathway preparation program will enable successful graduates to continue on a path into our New Zealand foundation and then on to a New Zealand university. We really very much look forward to welcoming Centurion students to our beautiful New Zealand homeland. And to share more about that, may I pass on to John Laxon. Regional Director of Education New Zealand. Namaste and good afternoon to all of our colleagues joining us from India and kia ora and good evening to our colleagues uh, from New Zealand. Thank you very much, uh, Mani, and also thank you very much, President Mishra of Centurion University and Your Excellency David Pine for your excellent comments uh, out there at the outset. I will touch just briefly on uh, the commitment of the New Zealand government to uh, this partnership and to our broader partnerships in India. So uh, just by way of introduction, all of our uh, New Zealand universities are ranked in the top 3% or top 500 globally uh, by QS World University rankings, including our partner universities here today, the University of Auckland, Auckland University of Technology, and Victoria University of Wellington. So uh, Centurion University colleagues, you have chosen uh, through UP Education some outstanding uh, New Zealand university partners uh, for this initiative. Uh, also to reference that New Zealand has a very progressive and supportive policy towards international education. Uh, and to international students. So uh, New Zealand was the first uh, country in the world to legislate uh, minimum standards of care for our international students. Uh, we also uh, subsidize uh, international PhD students to come and study uh, in New Zealand from, from any uh, partner country. Uh, and we have extended in-study and post-study work rights uh, for international students as well, which has seen in particular our uh, student numbers from India increasing uh, significantly and we've seen the highest growth uh, from any country in the world uh, from India uh, in our New Zealand universities over recent years. Uh, so we're very much committed to supporting uh, this ongoing partnership. Uh, our foreign minister or former foreign minister Winston Peters visited earlier this year to support the launch of a New Zealand India centre uh, which was supported by all of our universities. Uh, and we also offer dedicated New Zealand Excellence Awards uh, for Indian students to take up a New Zealand university experience. Uh, and we've had more than 100 Indian students take up uh, those awards to date. I'd just like to personally endorse the work of UP Education and in particular Richard Kensington for progressing this innovative uh, education initiative um, to help engage 
uh, Centurion, uh, Centurion students at this time. It's really exciting seeing these sorts of innovative solutions coming forward. Uh, and we look forward to supporting the New Zealand Foundation Preparation Program uh, on behalf of Education New Zealand. Uh, so congratulations to all concerned. Uh, we look forward to seeing this partnership flourish and uh, to many uh, students uh, taking up this pathway preparation program uh, onwards towards a New Zealand study experience. Kia ora. Thank you, Mr. John Laxon. I'm Sucheta Mohanty, Program Manager at Centurion University. Before I begin with the highlights of the program, I will take you through the reasons why a student should choose New Zealand as their preferred destination for future options. As an international rank holder with a reputation of quality education and peaceful habitat for residents from other countries, New Zealand has always been a preferred destination. New Zealand's stunning views, beautiful landscapes and rich culture provide students from overseas with opportunities to explore these habitats while pursuing their education. Coming to New Zealand, one will feel little less alien with a population less crowded, yet warm, friendly and welcoming for the international students. New Zealand will provide a great pathway for one to get ready for the ultimate hustle. According to a recent survey, parents were asked about their expectations from an educational destination. They responded with three important things, academic success, a safe and welcoming environment, and a possible future life destination for their children, all of which are available in this wonderful country called New Zealand. Like I've already stated the reasons why a student should choose New Zealand, in addition to all the above reasons, one might be shocked to know how they can still feel at home right after they have shifted from their homeland. As the education system in New Zealand allows them to bring along their guardian on the condition that they start working immediately once shifted permanently. During these odd times, New Zealand is one among few countries which has successfully fought COVID spread, which is quite commendable. Now, the highlights of the program. Tracted Pathway Program, created by the most learned and experienced hands, gives you a path to the brightest of platforms. It is a pre-university foundation program designed to open gates to undergraduate courses in prestigious universities in New Zealand. Tracted promises learning and knowledge as the very base of the whole procedure. It ensures a student-friendly platform which effective teaching strategies incorporated by the teachers. Tracted alongside teaching will deliver positivity and upgrade one's level to appear for the universities ahead. Now, to know more about our partners and their role, I would request Mr. Ganesh Karamanal, CEO of iQuery to present. Over to Mr. Ganesh. Thank you, Sucheta. His Excellency David Pine, uh, Professor Mishra, colleagues uh, from all partnering institutions from both uh, sides of the world. Um, it's an honor, a pleasure, and of course, it's a dream come true for me. Uh, having traveled all the way from India to Australia as an international student and uh, having uh, been an educationist both in India as well as in Australia, I never thought that uh, I was meant to be, you know, you know, setting up something like iQuery and eventually, I mean, setting up was one of the first challenge, but then when I set up with a goal of, uh, you know, enabling transnational partnerships, uh, uh, which, which values relationship and trust, because what are the fundamentals of any education institution around the world? Uh, be it uh, the universities or you know any system that we have seen that this we have seen has been based on those two words, trust and relationship. And if we are today, I suppose we all share this as a significant, evident, uh, common ground, both for today and the tomorrow to come. As a matter of fact, uh, 
Indian mindset or Indian society has uh, become very different from what it used to be or how Indians normally get perceived. We have seen the shift of focus from, you know, in terms of overseas education, from moving from higher education to, um, you know, uh, uh, postgraduate education to undergraduate education and further, uh, you know, downwards, as in, you know, the younger, uh, younger and younger students are, are trying to leave the country. And India, I'm told by quite a lot of people in business that India is not yet ready, it's not a good place for, it's not a great place, I should say, for undergraduate students. And I wanted to change that. Because the reality is Indian parents and students are as ambitious, as talented, as able as any other student anywhere in the world. And we also have the added advantage of English language proficiency compared to especially, uh, you know, having taught students from other monolingual countries who come fundamentally for, you know, English language uh, exposure to Australia and New Zealand. Uh, I think these are some of the fundamental things that made us decide on a model that would enable people in India, both parents and students, to understand how the system works. Because all it takes would take, I, you know, as well, my uh, thinking is concerned, is that um, it will, all it will take is unpacking what it is. Because when, you know, countries like New Zealand and Australia offer quality value-added uh, educational and career and life, life, you know, lifestyle opportunities, people want to come. Numbers have gone up, certainly. We have done quite well in this part of the world, but that's nowhere related to, nowhere connected to what the potential India has. Now, just look at, uh, I wouldn't know off the top of my head, uh, the population of New Zealand, but if you look at Australian population, we have more than one and a half times of Australian population uh, in terms of numbers, uh, the high school graduates coming out of Indian schools every year. So that's just a mind boggling number. So what is missing there is in quite uh, quite a many situations is that parents are concerned about the future. Uh, they need clarity, they need assurance, and they also need something to connect with. And that's exactly what I query hopes to do. Uh, we speak the languages. We understand the culture. So pretty much when we have you know two uh, two point for transition, we can be a uh, uh, an ongoing bridge, and that's exactly what we'll be doing in this partnership, right from the point of contact all the way to students arriving in New Zealand and thereafter. And that does not end there because you know they have to go through the courses, they have to be independent, and they become independent only when they get a job or when they decide where, where they want to be after graduation. So that's the point-to-point -point transition that we we intend to travel. Uh, we will be the co-travelers to every student traveling from India all the way to New Zealand and thereafter. So in short, that will be our role and very much looking forward to working with everyone. I mean, it's a wonderful team and uh, there is no better thing I could have asked for, especially in this year of pandemic. Thank you. With your speakers on mute. Thank you, Mr. Ganesh. Now I would request Mr. Richard Kensington, Principal Academic Relation at Up Education to present. Very slow. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, High Commissioner, Mr. David Pine. And thank you, President of Centurion, uh, Professor Mishra. To me, this is coming home to India. My grandmother was born in India in Varanasi. Her father was born in India near uh, Rajasthan in the early 1800s. So from a family connection, I have a long history with India. This is a unique program. It's a foundation preparation pathway program. So it's preparing students to commence a pathway which commences with foundation and eventually ends up with university in New Zealand and a degree in New Zealand. New Zealand is fortunate. We have eight universities. They are all owned by the New Zealand government. And as we heard earlier, they're all in the top 500 of the world. And Up Education is very fortunate to work with three of the leading universities in New Zealand. And 
we have worked with them for many years. The University of Auckland is our number one university, our top 100 university in New Zealand. And Up Education has worked with the university since 1998 when we start delivering their foundation program. We've worked with AUT University since 2004, and we've delivered their foundation program for them since then. And we also have many articulation agreements between our vocational programs and the university also. And we've worked with university, uh, Victoria University on two occasions, once in the early 2000s, and then again more recently from 2016, where we deliver their foundation program in Wellington and the studying campus in Wellington. So this program is designed to develop students, to enable them to have the skills to be successful in New Zealand. It enables them to have a, a successful start. If they are successful in this program in India, they will be successful in foundation and they definitely will be successful in their degree studies. So students to join this program, it's aimed at students who would normally apply to come direct to New Zealand and study a one year foundation program. So in terms of English, we expect them to have an English level of a minimum of IELTS of five. And in terms of their academic proficiency, they will have at least be successful in Indian year 10, or if they've been an IGCSE world, they've got a couple of Bs and a couple of C passes. The program itself is 18 weeks in duration. The first 17 weeks is academic study. Um, and the final week is, an exa is exams and the exams are delivered online by us from New Zealand. So all students will be studying English for IELTS and the aim is to get to IELTS of six. They will study a tertiary study skills course, which is focusing on essay writing, note taking, speech making, working in groups, preparing assignments. And then they'll study three of four academic subjects, mathematics, which is a mixture of calculus and statistics, Business is accounting and economics, science is physics and chemistry, and ancient history is the history of Greece and Rome. So if we just look at a flow diagram as we have here, we can see here this on the left, the student will have completed their year 10 in India. They will study a program delivered by Centurion University for up education. And in the 18th week, they will sit the final examination. So they'll sit three online examinations for their academic subjects. The tertiary study skills is assessed by an assignment and IELTS, they just need to produce this with an IELTS. So in terms of a GPA in their three academic subjects, if a student has a GPA greater than 80% and an IELTS of six, they will be able to convince foundation in New Zealand and do a two term or a five month program. If they have a GPA of greater than 70%, it'll be a three term program. So in terms of the programs they will be studying in New Zealand, during their time in the FPP program, they will nominate which university and which foundation program they would like to commence study with in New Zealand. And successful students in India are guaranteed a place in the foundation in New Zealand. So with the University of Auckland Foundation program, this program consists of um, four academic subjects that the student will study for a minimum of two terms, and they'll also study English for academic purposes. And for most students who graduate from the foundation program, if they pass the EAP, they will not need to produce another IELTS to enter the university. Students are guaranteed a place at the university as long as they meet the requirements for graduation. The AUT program is also a preparation program. It also provides a guarantee but the structure of the program is a little different to the Auckland program. This program has four compulsory subjects, English one, English two, culture and society and tertiary study skills. And then the students select optional subjects. So most students would select an initial four optional subjects. Each of these subjects is studied for one term. Success is when every subject is passed, except for English two, a student needs to get 65%. Victoria Foundation Program, which is delivered in Wellington. The structure of the program is very similar to the AUT program, but the requirements of the program are different. So the Victoria Program has four compulsory subjects, English one, English two, uh, New Zealand Culture and Society, and Introductory Maths. And then the students select optional subjects. 
a pass is getting 50% in each subject. There is no um, 65% in English too. As long as they get 50% in each subject, they have actually passed the course. So if we look at students who are in the University of Auckland program, and if they're interested in a Bachelor of Arts degree, if they have achieved 220 out of 400 in their four academic exams at the end of the course, and they have an EAP grade of B, the University of Auckland will guarantee them a place in an arts degree. And this degree is three years in duration. If the student was interested in an architecture degree, which is at the bottom line there, the student needs to have achieved 280 out of 400, also needs an EAP result of a B, but you notice on the right hand side, there's a few additional requirements. They need to produce a portfolio and also provide a written statement. So long as students meet those requirements, the University of Auckland will guarantee them a place in a degree study. Victoria Foundation Program is, has a similar sort of structure, except for the Victoria Foundation Program, students just need to pass every subject, including English, and generally they have met the entry requirements for that subject. There are some subjects that uh, some degree pathways, it's useful to sort of study some subjects in the foundation program, but students will be advised that when they're at the orientation program in New Zealand. And the AUT program is similar also. So with the AUT program, you must pass the four compulsory subjects. You must get 65% uh, for English too. And then your four academic subjects, as uh, long as you've passed each one of them and the total is greater than 200, then you have met the entry, academic entry requirements. So for all those degrees that are listed on that page there that you can see there, students need to get 200. They need to get EAP, an English two result of 65%. But if you notice on the bottom line there with interpreting, students also need to produce an IELTS and have a listening test. So the program itself, we believe is very exciting. It gives students guaranteed pathways from FPP through to the foundation program in New Zealand, and then gives them guaranteed pathways from the foundation program through to the University of Auckland or to AUT University or to Victoria University in Wellington. And everybody always is interested in scholarships. Now there are scholarships available. So students who meet the requirements to commence a two-term foundation program in New Zealand, there is an automatic scholarship available there. And also students who are top graduating students, there's a uh, top graduation scholarship of $8,000. So going on from this, we have a program which will get students through to New Zealand and Suchita might like to just talk about the timeline from now on. Suchita, turn your microphone on. Suchita, you're on mute. Suchita, you're on mute. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Richard. Now, the timeline uh, is like um, we, start, we, we, were, we plan to launch in the month of November, December, like we did. And then we have the entrance exam in the month of January. And uh, the entrance exam, and we have an uh, our entry requirement. Meeting those requirements, we will have the counseling and the enrollment for the students in the month of March and April. And then we start the program, the course, in the month of April and August. And we finish it in 18 weeks, like uh, discussed by Mr. Richard. And uh, then we work on the visa. We start the visa process uh, during the counseling and enrollment process. And uh, we are through with it. We are there in New Zealand in the month of August, in the month of October. Just one thing, uh, I think I have a question. Uh, is this whatever has been mentioned in this only these programs or there are other programs students interested can also enroll? So I can just answer that. So in terms of up education, we also have um, three vocational colleges in New Zealand. We have UB Colleges, which is a design school. Uh, we have NZDMA, which delivers hospitality and culinary courses. And we also have New Zealand School of Tourism. Those three schools deliver diploma programs. They also deliver programs that articulate through to the university. So for argument's sake, if a student does 
level five and level six hospitality with success, then they can articulate onto AUT University in another 18 months, they end up with a Bachelor of International Hospitality Management. So for us, we deliver a number of different pathways. Um, these three foundation programs are designed to, for students to enter the university of the foundation program. We are not promoting students to join other universities. Other universities can do similar promotions themselves if they would like. Hope that answers. No, my, my question was, suppose somebody wants to do BSc in information technology or bachelor yes, undergrad course in uh, uh, information technology. They can do any, in, I, I only put a sample of the degrees there. Oh, okay, you know, so they can do any course, okay. Okay. Absolutely. There are so, a couple of there are a couple of exclusions, but they generally every degree that's available at the university they can actually study, and the three university people can mention that when they talk. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, Satika, over to you. Mr. Richard, we will now shift to a very important part and hear views from the senior representatives of the three of the leading universities of New Zealand who have designed this program to ensure student success. Mr. Vinit Chatwal, CEO of Centurion University, will anchor with Brett Berquist, Director International at University of Auckland, Professor Guy Littlefair at PVC International at AUT University, Mr. Isaac Brosnan, International Business Development Manager at University, Victoria University of Wellington. Now, before Thank the discussion begins, I'll request the audience to add any questions they may have using the chat option on your screens. Thank you. So, thanks, thanks, Ajita, and thanks, uh, Richard, uh, and everybody who's spoken uh, before this. Uh, I think the key uh, question that uh, you know, most of our partners, school, et cetera, that we approach uh, will definitely have. I don't think your universities need any introduction. Uh, you know, they, these are all top ranked universities globally, uh, very well recognized. Uh, and that's one of the key reasons, uh, you know, for us, uh, you know, to be in this partnership uh, for creating that pathway. Uh, what I would request, uh, I guess each one of you do, uh, you know, starting uh, possibly with, uh, with the University of Auckland, uh, and then followed up uh, Marcel by you and then uh, by Isaac uh, or in whichever order you guys prefer, essentially is to just quickly speak about, uh, you know, what are these key differentiators uh, that you would want to highlight, uh, you know, to a student who's looking at, uh, you know, applying to New Zealand, uh, you know, after completing the foundation program. Uh, that's number one. And any specific things that the student should be sort of mindful of when they enroll into the foundation program things that they should specifically focus on uh, if they were to choose, uh, you know, applying to, uh, you know, either, either of the universities. Uh, so if, uh, uh, Professor Gee, if you could start and then, you know, we'll take it on uh, from there. Well, thank you very much for the uh, op opportunity. Um, just before I speak about AUT, there was a couple of things I wanted to say. So. This is an absolutely incredible program and I, I commend everyone that's behind this program in coming up with an opportunity for students to transition in such a way that they can eventually end up with a undergraduate or who knows, a postgraduate qualification from one of our great universities here in New Zealand. I think it's important to say that why is education so important? Education is so important because it really makes a difference to the lives of young people. And when I talk about in the lives of young people, I'm thinking about the how education enables people. And I think there are three things to me that go to the heart of international education. And that is the enabler of possibilities, the enabler of prosperity, and the enabler of potential. So turning to AUT, I really think that AUT as a hallmark of being an applied institution. Our programs and our research are very much applied. And what that means for international students in particular that come to study at AUT is that there are direct linkages into employment. We pride ourselves on our high levels of employment. And from an Indian student perspective, we have more Indian students here at AUT than any other university in New Zealand. I've visited India many, many times. Um, I'm proud to be a 
visiting professor of industrial engineering at the Indian Institute of Technology in Hyderabad. And anything that AUT can do to support this program and support students from India wishing to travel to New Zealand, start a new life and receive that wonderful education, we're very much here, ready and able to support. And fingers crossed with the vaccine that's been announced and with the borders, I'm sure, opening very, very soon, we will once again, with open arms, welcome our Indian students very, very shortly. Suchata, I think you're, again, you are uh, muted. Please unmute yourself. Uh, Please. No, no, that's fine. I'm, I'm unmuted now, so I think it's, it's my... Brad, may I ask you to go next? Yes, very happy to. Kia ora. Namaste. I'm very pleased to be with you this evening and to advance this partnership with Centurion. I was just reminiscing that last year, on one of my last trips to India, I had the great pleasure of visiting Bhupaneswar. We have a joint PhD program with the IIT there in Bhupaneswar, and we were there to um, finalize some details. And uh, I was there with our Deputy Vice Chancellor for Strategic Engagement, as, long, uh, as well as with the Dean of our Graduate School. And we had uh, some lovely memories of visiting the Peace Pagoda and some of the ancient temples <clears throat> in Bhubaneswar. So it's a region of India that we're closely um, linked to. We also have a strong partnership with IIT Kharagpur on, on that, you know, West Bengal as well. <clears throat> um, I think uh, the overview has given you a good sense of what New Zealand has to offer and the interests of the pathways. Um, we've been working with UB Education. I think, Richard, correct me if I'm wrong, I think this is our 21st year of collaboration. Now, it's I've not been in this role for 21 years, <laughs> but um, it shows something for the longevity of the partnership. Um, they've been working with AUT for quite some time as well, um, Victoria University of Wellington a little bit more recently. But it's a very solid New Zealand-based um, entity that has a lot to offer and that knows how our universities work very well. We have a long history of success. We look frequently at the curriculum that we offer. We recently revised the curriculum, did a complete overhaul. We track the performance of the students who come into the foundation and who transfer to the University of Auckland. Because above all else, I think we have a, uh, something that we share um, with everyone on the call, and that is the success of the students. We have many Indian students coming to New Zealand. Um, that has been growing of late, as John Laxon and Marnie pointed out. Um, we have been focusing on more collaboration among the eight universities with New Zealand, leading to the establishment of a New Zealand center in Delhi, where all eight universities are participating in that relationship, really wanting to elevate the visibility of the eight universities and what we have to offer. Um, each one of us has a slightly different profile. The University of Auckland uh, was founded in 1883 um, and is the premier research-oriented university um, in New Zealand. As John mentioned, all eight of the universities are of excellent quality, um, but we tend to focus a lot on the research area um, and are the highest ranked university in New Zealand with 81 QS. Also for the last two years, we've um, done quite well in a new ranking that the Times Higher has put together. I know that there's some controversy regarding the Times Higher in India, <laughs> that not all VCs in India are particularly keen on what the Times Higher is doing. And it's been interesting to follow the press in that conversation. Um, we've been sponsoring the India Rankings Workshop um, with QS for the past three years. Unfortunately, the event in Goa, which should have been earlier this month, has had to be postponed until 2021. Um, I was just missing not making it to Goa this year. So we understand a lot about what New Zealand, uh, sorry, what Indian universities are doing and how they're trying to progress their agenda. Um, the interesting opportunities that the new education program offers to Indian universities. And, and the challenges you face as well with the sheer number of students where you're trying to increase their access. So this sort of a collaboration offers um, a real interesting opportunity for students to begin their studies for a New Zealand degree in India. So that does save them some time. It certainly saves them some funds. And if it's anything like the past cooperation we've had with UP Education in other areas, 
we believe the students will be very successful. Now, the ranking I was referring to with the Times Higher is called the Global Impact Ranking, and it focuses on how universities are working towards the 17 Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations. Um, and there's growing interest in India around sustainability, and that is something that is driving our thinking here as we work through a new strategic plan. So we were quite pleased that for the last two years, we were ranked number one in the world in the Times Higher Global Impact Rankings that look at the SDGs. Um, so uh, I'm sure you'll hear more through the rest of the call, but I think the main thing that we're interested in here is it gives a new pathway for Indian students to prepare for a degree from New Zealand. And if they choose any one of the three universities, they should have a very successful experience and a successful career. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Brett. Uh, in fact, this is going to be our first participation in the impact rankings from a Centurion University perspective. And I have actually been uh, spending a lot of time on your website, uh, you know, looking at uh, how you sort of uh, presented, uh, you know, various programs, etc. Uh, and how do we sort of create uh, evidence around, you know, some of the work that University uh, Centurion University has done, uh, uh, you know, over the, over the past decade. And uh, you know, drawing a lot of inspiration from uh, the way you guys have structured, uh, you know, the, the, the evidence in the public domain, uh, which obviously scores you an extra point, uh, you know, on various criteria on impact ranking. Uh, so thank you very much for that. Uh, and also, uh, so it, it's a tough benchmark to meet, but uh, you know, eventually, I'm hoping that we'll get there uh, and, and score well uh, as we sort of successfully uh, participate and demonstrate our impact. Uh, thank you very much. Well, for hopefully. That. Yeah. Hopefully it's something we'll be able to talk about in person sometime next year. We'll see. That would be fantastic. Thank you. Uh, Isaac, may I ask you to go next? Uh, kia ora to my New Zealand colleagues and uh, namaste sabalo to my uh, new Indian partners. Um, thank you for inviting Victoria University of Wellington along to this event. It's a privilege to be here. Um, We've had quite a good overview from um, both uh, Richard Kensington and John Laxon on, on, on the universities and our rankings and things like that. Uh, the thing that stands out for our university is that we're a capital city university, so we've got really good global engagement. It means that um, our, our location and uh, our surrounds lend us to um, specialising in certain programmes. Uh, I won't go through them all because um, we're, we're a little bit um, strapped for time, but things like law, political science, and, and, and areas like that, we're particularly renowned for. Uh, much like my colleagues who's, who've already spoken about um, India being very important for our university, um, we were also seeing exponential growth uh, pre-COVID. Unfortunately, that was, that was put to a halt. And um, I, much like my colleagues, have fond memories of visiting India regularly um, at the peak of our travels. We were going there three, four times a year. Really missed the food and the nice people uh, and the cricket uh, fanaticism. Uh, those were really good times. And so we, wanna, we definitely want to go back to that. This relationship is really important to us as well. Um, we've been working with UP Education uh, for four years now. We monitor and uh, moderate and work with the teachers at the foundation program really closely. So our lecturers are moderating every course that is taught there. Um, and the results speak for themselves really when the students give us feedback uh, and their grades will show that the transition is much stronger for them when compared to other international students adapting to the New Zealand education. Yeah. Over to you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, uh, this, this has been pretty insightful in terms of, uh, you know, getting some sense of the kind of programs, uh, you know, ranging from, uh, you know, the, the, the long history uh, for somebody like University of Auckland and the locational advantages that possibly uh, University of uh, Wellington might have. Um, what I would do essentially now is any, any last remarks that any of you uh, wants to make in terms of, uh, you know, beyond the transition success that possibly a student does have, uh, 
any other specific types of students, uh, you know, that sort of are particularly more successful compared to others uh, in securing admissions uh, across the courses? I would make a comment, you know, sure. students are always successful when they have excellent English. So, you know, while we're aiming for students to have IELTS of six when they arrive in New Zealand, if they've got a higher level of English when they arrive in New Zealand, they will fly through the foundation program very quickly and they'll quickly assimilate into culture in New Zealand, whether it's at AUT University or the University of Auckland or Victoria University in Wellington. Fluency in English is really important. And I think one thing we haven't mentioned is age. So we know as an international student, we can accept international students into foundation in New Zealand from the age of 16, which is lower than some other places in the world. And we have had many students of that age who have commenced foundation in New Zealand and have gone on to be successful at the university. Um, we pride ourselves in the care of our students in New Zealand in terms of our homestay and our support services. And all our three universities have enormous student welfare support packages that look after their students. And I think, you know, maybe um, AUT like might to add a little bit what they actually do that makes them a little bit different from their other partner university in Auckland. Excellent. Okay, thank, thanks for that, Richard. Uh, Sujeta, over to you now. Thank you to all the panelists. Thank you. Mr. Vinay Chatwal, we are very excited about this program as it promises a gateway to all the three universities ranked among top 1% in the world. Now, moving forward to our next speaker, Ms. Kalapurna Nala, Director of Centurion Public School. Ms. Kalapurna would request you to share your feedback on the program design and opportunities for the students. Namaste. My warm greetings to His Excellency David Pine, Mukti Kanta Mishra sir, all the dignitaries, principals of various schools, press, ladies and gentlemen. As educators, we always look to life-changing experiences for students and studying abroad has become one such global phenomenon. It is quite challenging for all the stakeholders to come to terms with studying outside one's own country. However, when the student explores his or her own capabilities to embrace the various cultures and making new relationships, the student has taken the first step to widening career opportunities by becoming more independent in their decision-making. It becomes more of an experience-based learning, which is the need of the day. We at Centurion are fortunate to be a part of this pathway program where an opportunity is given to the aspiring students to complete their education in world-class universities and thus enabling them to realize their dreams. The program has been structured very comprehensively and is aligned to the cur curriculum of all the recognized boards like the CBSC, the ICSC, etc. The pathway which has been vetted by the experts allows the students to score a good percentage under the guidance of expert teachers, making him or her eligible to get admission in one of the top universities of the world. As a parent, one would be more than delighted to avail the program for his or her world as it would pave the path for a very bright future. So we look forward to a very robust participation in this program. Thank you, thank you so much. You're on mute. Peter, Peter. Sorry, once again. Thank you, Ms. Kalapurna, for your valuable insight. Next, would request Ms. Neely Ahmed, founder and trustee of Marius Public School in Assam, to share her in-depth understanding of Northeast region, especially on school education and opportunities of students in respect to this pathway program. Microphone. Ma'am, you need to unmute yourself. Namaste, everyone. And a very good afternoon to His Excellency, Mr. David Pine, High Commissioner of New Zealand in India, and all the honorable members of different organizations. It feels a privilege to, to be able to sit among such an August gathering 
and put across certain points. The tracked ed IFPP program since surely looks promising and welcoming, keeping in view of exuberance in talent, brilliant minds, proficiency in English language, adaptability, flexibility, and technical know-how of, uh, of students in the Northeast of India, as well as mainland India. As the program is designed to open gates to universities in New Zealand, I am sure this program will work out as a pathfinder for many of our promising students in Northeast of India. And we in the Northeast, we are in, uh, extremely privileged to have such a great opportunity of such wonderful universities come to us. And uh, we like to take this forward for our brilliant students who have uh, definitely gone beyond our school programs abroad. And uh, in the Northeast, we want the exposure happening for many of our students who are extremely brilliant, but due to lack of opportunities, they remain where they are, but they do excel where they have to excel. And with this, I would like to uh, take Mr. Biswaji Day to share a bit about the Northeast and our school background of the activities that we do so that it brings focused uh, attention to the activities of the school and what Maria's Public School is been or has been doing uh, in Guwahati and the northeast of India. Over to you, Biswajit. Uh, thank you, ma'am. And good afternoon to all of you and good afternoon especially to His Excellency. Uh, when it comes to northeast India, like from liberal arts to literature, from science to technology, from IT to design, from music to art, the students of Northeast India have been enterprising educational institutions in metro cities in India and also abroad, like over the past few years. They have placed themselves in institutions in the US, Europe, Middle East, and the Australasia. You, you name any major industry in India, it would have the students of Northeast India who have explored almost every kind of opportunities and have also adhered themselves with their roots. That is the most important thing. I think the program, like it's very, it's very comprehensive. And the most important aspect of the program is like it's it's giving the students a lot of opportunities to explore like varied amounts, amounts of uh, areas, like where they can keep themselves adhered to the roots. And the students from Northeast aspire to explore opportunities where they can have information sharing and learning with the student communities of other countries. And I think that this program is fantastic for them. And they also want to develop the means to solve problems and create platform where they can work cohesively to find collective solutions and or global solutions. So Maria's Public School, why Maria's Public School in Northeast India? Like we have been the pioneers to bring in quality education in the state of Assam and Northeast India over the past few years. Like the, we have been the first school like who have introduced the new age paradigms in environment education because we are from the most prominent biogeographic region of the country. We have been the pioneers in introducing design. Like I, I could see like every program was offering the faculty of design. Like I was really interested to see that. We were the first school in Northeast India to give an opportunity to the students to start with the basics of design right from the class eight, the standard eight. So we have a comprehensive program. We have transformed the art curriculum from the class eight to the class 12 and the basics of designs are being taught. So I think like it, that, that will give an opportunity to the students to explore the possibilities of designing fantastic portfolios for the New Zealand universities. We have been, we have been the national coordinator school for the Green Schools Alliance and with our affiliations with the foreign institutions and organizations like Round Square and AFS, like we explore like more about the community interaction and connection. And we want to build up a common platform where we can create a support system for not only the private schools and collaborate with them, but also support the government schools. And I think the program is going to enhance the capabilities of the students and empower them. Thank you so much, ma'am. You know, I, I, I would like to add here that uh, the students from Northeast, uh, definitely they have better English command 
than yes, most sir. of the eastern part of the country. So that is an added advantage which Northeast has, and uh, even also in accent, they are much better than the part of the eastern uh, peers of uh, you know those schools. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Biswajit De. Thank you, sir, for inspiring words. These are the details that we wanted to share before we proceed to the question and answer round. We have the panel to comprehend and contribute to all the questions. Look, we covered everything. We have no questions, no doubts, yes. nothing. No questions. Can I introduce my principal, Mrs. Moshimi Mahanta. She would like to speak a little more about the school and the background that we come from in the Northeast. Yeah, Moshimi, are you there? Connection. And uh, I just had to log out. Am I audible? Yes. 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 Uh, good afternoon. His Excellency David Pine and all esteemed panelists here. Uh, Maria's Public School is a child-friendly school and uh, we are very, very particular about the happiness portions. It's very important to us. And uh, we have been able to balance academics with our co-curriculars very well. Our affiliations with the IAYP, International Award for Young People, Round Square, American Field Service India, British Council, to name a few, you know, have given our students an edge. They have been multitasking. They have been, you know, trying to compete against themselves more than anything else. And uh, they have a strong sense of responsibility, uh, the global values of empathy and uh, community service. And, uh, you know, they are very, very keen to venture out and uh, very curious to know what lies beyond. And most of our students have been able to, you know, find a place in prestigious universities, uh, the prestigious IMs and IITs in the country. We've had students going to Oxford, Cambridge, University of Pennsylvania, Brown University, uh, to name a few. Some of our students are presently in London School of Economics. We have four students presently doing their studies there. And uh, we have few students in Japan. So, you know, given an opportunity, they would definitely like to take it forward. So uh, it will be very nice if you can, you know, show them that New Zealand is also a place that they can aspire for. In fact, one of our students passed out from a university in New Zealand. It's called University of Waikato. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, it's called University of Waikato, W-A-I-K-A-T-O, I think. And he's already working there. Likewise, we have students in Australia as well. So I think this is going to be a very, very good um, initiative, you know, to show them that there are so many of the best universities in New Zealand that they can aspire for. Thank you. Thank you, Sucheta. Um, Sucheta, you need to unmute. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for inspiring words. We would request our president, sir, to felicitate the speakers. Virtual memento to the university representatives and partners. <laughs> Again, virtual. And sooner we should have a real presentation and uh, everything is now virtual. Uh, this is too much of virtualness. Now, now there's some good news on the vaccine, so hopefully soon. Yes, uh, I, I hope so. And... Um, uh, yeah, I, what do we? Do? How do you do that? Even for me also, this is first time I'm presenting virtually. <laughs> so, beneath, why don't you do this? I'm I'm actually not a technological. I'm actually a technologically retired person, but still I will try to understand this. Why don't you do it? Because I can't. Uh, so, what we so just say this and so then so we, will, we, we will basically just show this on the screen as a as a sign yeah. of our gratitude. And I promise, yeah. I, I promise, I'll get these fabricated and uh, have them sent over. Or whenever I meet you guys in person, I'll hand these over to you. Yes. So this is for Mr. John Lex uh, John Lexon. I I think is he there? Still uh, online? Yes, he is. Gone. He's gone. Okay. Go on, Next. 
uh, I think uh, Brett is there still. Yes. One next. Professor Littlefair, is he there? Yes, he is there. Yes. Okay, here I am virtually presenting it to you. <laughs> Go on to the next one. Yes, Isaac, say. Thank you, Dr. Mishra. Thank you. <laughs> Please accept this virtually. I do. <laughs> I'm not sure where I'll put it, but thank you. Really, <laughs> <laughs> minute to come. Go on. Marine, I think she has left or she's there. Dr. Mishra, I'm here. Thank you very much for this opportunity and this partnership. Thank, thank you, Marine. Good to see you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ganeshji, you. you are thank the you man. Very much. Pleasure. Thank you. Okay. So I would like to, uh, you know, we, we, are, we are coming to the conclusion uh, or conclude this session. I think thank you very much. Uh, I'm actually praying uh, also that, you know, it should succeed. Many of the partnerships start, uh, as we know, in the world and, uh, and at least 10% uh, succeed, 90% don't succeed, but I want to be part of this 10%. Um, with the help from our colleagues and friends from Northeast, uh, we will try to make the fast, uh, uh, you know, the mobility, make the mobility faster. Uh, with Ganesh, uh, the, once the border opens, uh, you can travel and uh, help us to, you know, there will be queries from people. You need to be here to uh, uh, understand their concerns and explain. I think Suchita is very able person to lead this uh, from the front, from our mm -hmm. side. So all of us would put together um, all the efforts and see that it succeeds. That, that much I can only say. And uh, we will do everything to make it a success. Uh, thank you very much, uh, all my colleagues and friends, um, both from New Zealand and from India. Thank you very much. Uh, a special thank you to the High Commissioner as well. Thank you very much. And happy Diwali, everybody. And uh, yes, there are some questions uh, from some people. I think, Ranjana, uh, there we can, we can, on the sideline, we can uh, respond to that. And, uh, and thank you very much for the happy Diwali. And I know that uh, Diwali will be very subdued and uh, mostly virtual. Thank you very much for that. And we so happy the world to all of us. Thank you, everyone. So there are any, any questions, etc. we've taken note of that. We will respond to you via email. Thank you. Thank you very much. Post a vote of thanks. Yes. What are the process? Yeah, that, that, that some question. What is the process for lunching? People are asking. So I think, uh, Vinith, you can uh, link and uh, there will be any query. I, who is from High Commissioner's Office leading this? Uh, if there will be something, because in Indian schools, they might like to link up with the High Commissioner's Office. So who is the person from High Commissioner's Office dealing with this? With education? You are lost. I think is, is inquiries, can, inquiries should be able to go. Huh, yeah. Uh, it's my colleague, Jugna Roy, who I think is still here. Yes. Um, if you just want to contact us on the administrative side. Um, yes. Uh, actually, at the moment, um, both of the people are away sick. Um, so... But uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. So whenever, because the, when there will be some queries, we can send it to them or link them so they, they can get satisfied that, yes, they have been attended to. Because this is the first year, so we want to be extra careful. Year one Super. always is an issue. Once some students go, then they will talk to uh, each other. Well, you can contact, uh, you know, contact any of us and we'll make sure you get the right answer. Thank you. Okay, so right. it is uh, uh, quite, quite, quite late in New Zealand. Have a good night, sir. Have a good week ahead and good weekend. And Thank uh, you. again, connect soon. Thank you. See you bye all bye. soon. Bye bye. Thank you, all everybody. Good night. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.